Hey guys, we are here at Star Wars Celebration Anaheim 2015. Uh, first time Celebration has been in California for quite some time. It has packed the house here as we are recording. We're a couple days in. We've been covering the event since Monday. You may follow along with us in our social media, YouTube channel and all of that. We're going to be taking you around the floor to pick up a variety of different things behind us from the displays, the diorama building, the autograph hall, tons of vintage toy merchandise, fun things there. We're going to take you around in the arena as well as all the other panels have had a lot of great programs. So we're going to take you around, show you a little bit of what the floor has to offer right now and uh, take you around. Here we go again. One, two, Star Wars Celebration would be nothing without the big guests. I mean, that's really what packs the house, is the Carrie Fishers, the Mark Hamels, Ian McDiarmid, all of them coming together to combine forces for this epic wing weekend that really does make it the biggest Star Wars party in the galaxy. Um, behind us is the Autograph Hall, which is run by official picks. Very efficient, very cool, well run. Uh, times are very clear. That said, it is a madhouse, and it's been a madhouse since open on Thursday morning. It doesn't look like there's going to be any let up at all. Actually, right off to the right over here is just the huge line of just people dropping off merchandise to be autographed. They've given up on standing in line. They're just dropping things off to be signed. But you've got the official picks autograph hall schedule over there as well, which is really nice. Each day they post that. They're really great on social media. At the end of the day, they do the best job that they possibly can with a nutso environment. I mean, the autographing here, uh, to say that it is rivaled by San Diego Comic-Con would not be fair. It's, it's way more nuts here than most things we see at San Diego Comic-Con. And that's kind of true throughout the floor. That being said, let's take a walk, look at some of these lines of what we have going on and some of the guests that we have in the autograph hall. the autographing and the star power, a big draw for Star Wars Celebration Anaheim is getting into the scene and making yourself part of the movie. Uh, behind us is a sand crawler. There's the most icely cantina, a rancor, at at all sorts of amazing displays that were built, either some by uh, fans, some by Lucasfilm, all of those kind of coupling with the cosplay. Tons of great images to see throughout and a lot of memorable moments that you can have. Let's go take a look at some of these.
Muchas gracias, muchas gracias. big draw at Star Wars Celebration is the exclusives and just the overall vendor floor. Tons of great things here uh, related to vintage merchandise. I mean, really the best Star Wars vintage merchandise we've seen in uh, years. I mean, this is the 101st convention we've covered since February of 2013. More great uh, stuff on that scene than all of those cons combined. Instead, looking behind us, we've got Lego, we've got Funko, we've got all sorts of great exclusive booths, Think Geek, things like that. Funko attracting huge crowds of people. A lot of selling, a lot of buying going on. We'll talk more a little bit about that scene as we wrap up the show in the end of the con, but first let's just take a look at some of the great things the vendors have to offer here.
Be it panels or exhibits, there's a lot of things you can check out at Star Wars Celebration that kind of bring the history, the culture, uh, and just the flair of Star Wars right into your face. So we've got Rancho Obi-Wan behind us here. Uh, you're able to look at some of the greatest Star Wars collectibles around from one of the greatest Star Wars collectors around, all gathered there. There's the Force Awakens exhibit, there's various art demonstrations, the uh, autograph, I'm sorry, the tattooing area uh, where you can see all sorts of work from tattoo artists across the globe, uh, as well as just the panels. The arena's been a big hit great panels in there. We have Star Wars Rebels, Anthony Daniels, Ian McDermott, Mark Hamill, all of the biggest stars. Obviously led off on Thursday by the biggest panel of the week, which was The Force Awakens, Kathleen Kenny, J.J. Abrams coming together to talk about the next step in the Star Wars universe. So let's take you around a little bit, see some of these exhibits, Star Wars uh, social area, collector's area, all of that, as well as some of the fun stuff, uh, some highlights maybe from the arena.
the Jedi Shakespeare book. And there is a scene in here with uh, you and Luke Skywalker. Okay. And I'm wondering if I, if I gave you this, and maybe just, uh, we can give you a light. Would you guys want to see him perform? <laughs> you can say no. Now come on, hate me, hate me. Uh, Yes, please, yes. the stage is yours. Well, thank you, uh, James. Yes. Uh, I have to be careful. It's, it's, I'm very happy to indulge you. I just hope I don't indulge myself. Oh, <laughs> please do. Okay, I don't quite know what the context is. But here we go. Oh, yes, I'll read the stage direction just before. It says, <laughs> Emperor Palpatine strikes Luke Skywalker with lightning that flows through his hands. Luke falls, Darth Vader rises. <clears throat> then Luke says, oh agony, as well he might. Mark should be here to do that. Yeah. Right? But you know, he's in the building somewhere. Here, here we go. <laughs> Young fool, tis only now in this thy final living moment thou dost comprehend thy folly and my might. Thy feeble skills are nothing when compared to all the power of the dark side. Thou dost pay the rightful price for thy severe and utter lack of vision. I, thy debt is due, and I am both thy creditor and thy collector too. What thou hast. 
dost not repay with thy belief, I shall exact from thy own flesh. And oh, what joy it brings to charge thee thus, my payment justly earned, to wound thee, hurt thee, break thee, and then the last, to bring thee to the death that I am owed. Okay, how about favorite piece of C-3PO merchandise? This is, this is definitely a runner-up, but, um, what, what, this is... C-3PO merchandise for you. The worst uh, 3PO merchandise actually comes to me without any uh, memory nudge at all, uh, and we won't have mood music because and it's. Has anybody ever seen the uh, Scotch tape dispenser? For those who have never seen it, I will. No. A demonstration? I will not demonstrate. <laughs> okay. Imagine a ceramic thing about that big uh, with 3 PO in, in a sort of, um, how we, shall we say, um, interesting position. <laughs> <laughs> I am bored. I, it's made by a company called Taste Setters. That's the name of the company. Taste Setters. And I, of course, immediately said, well, are you going to do the other one? A toilet tissue dispenser with that thing. What do you think? What do you think? Do you want to buy that? You buy that, wouldn't you? Okay. You buy it? Yes. Disney, I own the copyright on that idea, okay? here to humiliate the people who made it. <laughs> Taste setters. Right. Thank you. Don't touch. Thank you very much. Um, uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. So I'm giving I'm giving you permission to leave yet. <laughs> Jason, watch this woman. Okay. Um, I, I got this funny question. Uh, why are you carrying around? <laughs> I mean, I know Star Wars fans are weird, but to carry that around in your back pocket is a little strange. Um, did I choose? Okay, I think they're here at Celebration. In fact, I think they're here right now. Ladies and gentlemen, Ashley Eckstein and Keith.
Hey, you two. Yeah. Having fun? Fuck a so, uh, I've been waiting for this moment for a long time. We all are. So have we. How does it, uh, is it, now it's time for a really dumb question. How does it feel? <laughs> Ashley. Oh my goodness, well, the secret was out for me after the season one finale. That yep. was a hard secret to keep. Um, <laughs> One day in the recording studio, and in walks Dee Bradley Baker. And I looked at Dave, and I mean, honestly, I looked at Dee, and I just started crying. Like, <laughs> tears coming down my face because it had been over two years since we recorded together, and I didn't know, you know, where Captain Rex was. I didn't know if Ahsoka knew where he was, and yeah, and so <laughs> I, just, I just started crying. I was so happy that Captain Rex was back. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it kind of took my breath away because I, I mean, the, the, the only hopeful thing I had was that, that Rex hadn't been killed off in the Clone Wars. And so there was still some hope of, 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 of that coming back into the story. So I was, I was more than thrilled because I, I, I want to, you know, I, I, I want to see what this guy still got in him. And I think the fans are really going to see that along with um, a few of his clone friends. Um, uh, Really maybe, maybe, I, I guess I'm not going to tell you much more about that. I'll, I'll leave that to you to tell you more of the details. But <laughs> look at those but guys. As you saw, to see, to see these fellows going up, uh, these these old lions going up at an imperial walker is uh, it's pretty awesome. Uh, it's it's but but to me more importantly, I mean th this is a very exciting trailer as someone who loves Star Wars in the old way and as, as, as well as in the new manifestations. I mean, it looks just fantastic and it feels uh, fun and energetic. It's got the drama and, um, and the fun, the light that the cast already brings to it and it's, it is very exciting. It is what exciting. Is coming up. And in fact, it's so exciting, I know that there are people here that would love to ask you all questions. So is it all right if we take some questions from this council right here? You've got, you've got one right here? Oh. Don't be fooled, Dave. Oh. This is the most dangerous one. She's even smaller. <laughs> Let's see. Hello, my dear. What's your name? Eliza. What's your question, Eliza? Oh. <laughs> Don't disappoint Eliza. Who <laughs> does Chopper's voice in the movie? It's a Jedi sidebar. I told her the truth. Absolutely, and you were able, obviously, you know, 
And vulnerability, vulnerability. She was vulnerable, and I think people kind of forget that they tend to jump to these other things, but... Uh... Hey guys, we're here at the Star Wars Celebration Collecting Track Social Area where they're having the swap meet tonight. And so uh, it was major, major packed, crazy crowded with all sorts of uh, lines. This whole area was queued up. It's just about over now, but I thought I'd take a quick little walk through. Really fun little event. We actually set up our own little spot out here. At the time when we set up, there was just so many people inside that there were several uh, of us outside. And so we set up there and we've actually show, sold quite a bit of stuff. It was pretty fun just uh, uh, bringing some extras, doubles, triples, quadruples that we have around the house and bringing them in. But let's just take a little walk through here and see some cool stuff. Um, at the beginning of this party, I mean, it was just, you couldn't move an inch without somebody's uh, right on top of you. So it's, it's cleared out. As I said, it really technically it ended about 15 minutes ago. It's still a decent crowd here. A little bit of new stuff, but a lot of fun little oddball stuff. A lot of foreign things, a lot of vintage carded stuff, some bootlegs, uh, some fun stuff like that. We bought a carded Bespin uh, figure. We bought a t-shirt with the Kenner uh, collector's case logo on it. We bought a little $5 uh, guide from uh, Oral-B for dental hygiene as told by the Star Wars characters. Uh, bought a $1 lanyard for Celebration Europe. Um, and then bought a brand new Sabine uh, two-pack with the Stormtrooper from Star Wars Rebels. So it's been about 60 bucks. We've made about 150 or so now. So it was a good profitable little time and a lot of fun. But just neat, neat stuff. Definitely uh, a fun little highlight to Star Wars Celebration Anaheim. We've been having a great time. You can check out all of our coverage if you're not already following along on our YouTube channel, on our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all at Parks and Cons. Um, and also we will have a ton of different videos, or we do have a ton of videos as of this recording. We have over 70 videos up. We've got another full overview coming up as well. It's going to kind of break down everything we saw and did and uh, what we thought of Celebration Anaheim. So anyway, good time here. Definitely suggest checking out the collector's swap meet in future celebrations. The good people at Star Wars Action News leading the efforts of putting together a great event here. So thanks to them and thanks to all the people that put effort into making this event happen. So really fun little highlight to Celebration Anaheim. Until next time. Hey guys, we hope you enjoyed our tour through Star Wars Celebration Anaheim. We had a really good time. Uh, there was ups and downs, some things with, you know, line control, um, organization. There was some definite learning curve there, I think, for uh, Reed Pop and the whole Celebration crew. But that being said, we had an awesome time. We're going to a lot more talk about all of this on our podcast, both the best things and some of the, the bad things of the weekend. So head over to iTunes or Stitcher or website to listen to Parks and Cons to hear a much more detailed analysis. We've got two podcasts on that. That being said, we're going to wrap up this video the way we wrap up all of our videos with our under the con where we go underneath the hood of the convention to look at some of the things that uh, kind of set it apart made it unique and kind of got it gave a tone for the weekend so first up just talking a little bit about panels and how the Ellington panels were super crowded um, things like the star tots uh, made something that used to be not as crowded the collector's track uh, super crowded and so that kind of is a you know it is what it is it's nice to bring all these people into the collecting track at the same time it's kind of a downer because people like us that just wanted to see the collecting track we never wanted 
wanted to invest the hour and a half, two hours it would take to make that happen. Um, so we bought one of the carrying cases just to have that, um, but we actually never picked up a Star Tot ourselves and never got into any of these collector's panels because they just consistently had these super long lines. Hopefully everybody that was in the line are collectors and wanted the Star Tots for that and aren't just scalpers selling them on eBay. That being said, there's a lot of them on eBay right now and there have been in the past, so it is what it is. You know, with the panels in general, what we were talking about as we kind of ended the weekend is it really ha is a show that you end up having to put a lot more time and planning into the panel schedule maybe than at first look. Um, a lot of them do require a longer wait than uh, maybe you expect. It reminds us a lot of just D23 where it's kind of a sucker punch with a lot of the panels is uh, you're playing a guessing game. You know, somewhere like San Diego, you just know every panel is going to be an investment of several hours and you plan around it. Celebration, you know, there were some we walked right into. I can't believe that we were able to get into uh, the panel that ended up being all about Rogue One. We saw the teaser trailer. No one else has seen it as of the recording of this anywhere in the world. Uh, we just walked in there in the arena and, and made our way in there and there was tons of seats open. Uh, meanwhile, things like, you know, Mark Hamill, Carrie Fisher, obviously, huge crowds overpacked um, the closing ceremonies you know lines around the block shoots filling up hours before so it's really tough to kind of get in a rhythm when the show is so up and down I think a lot of that could be eased if they just consistently would use the larger rooms there was several points in time where they had the arena empty and we're using 300 AB it would have been awesome to see just everything that had that decent size go into uh, the arena when it was open obviously sometimes they had other things going on in there but uh, anyway for this celebration Anaheim and as we closed out we found out they're going to be in London next, so it's going to be a while until we see them in Anaheim, so we'll see if any of that really matters. Uh, also, though, swag on the floor. Lots of people giving out posters, patches, uh, a lot of just kind of fan-made things, clubs, things like that. Hasbro had some cool Black Series uh, posters we picked up. Lego did a series of posters we picked up, which was awesome. Uh, exclusives, a big part of Celebration. Um, we picked up the Lego. Uh, we picked up the Hallmark stuff. A couple other things in the exclusive realm. Um, really really tough go with the exclusives um, and this is kind of uh, a celebration consistency of the VIP badges really kill things because they get in a half hour early there's no limits on their badges nor are there on any of the badges it's not like they stamp them like at San Diego or anything like that so as a VIP I could get in line for ha uh, for Lego every day at 9 30 a.m. and be flipping them on eBay $40 in 200 bucks out consistently and so that's really a bummer it's kind of a downer as you you know you fight to be one of the first people on the floor as a regular attendee, media included in that. We get on the floor within, you know, five minutes we're in line and it's already capped or it's already sold out. I mean, they have a gentle giant uh, three days in a row. We got we, we were in line two days, uh, the third day from reports, but basically within 10 to 15 minutes of the show opening, it was capped and, and done. Um, on opening day, uh, Gentle Giant Evis told us they were sold out before the doors opened to regular attendees. And so it's a very much a rigged game. Not a fan of that. It happens at San Diego in different ways with exhibitors, but it's just, it, you know, it's really in bad taste. Um, I think at any convention and really call upon convention uh, organizers to do something about that is a really bad experience for attendees to see the exclusive uh, that whatever Hallmark or Hasbro is selling for five times the price at a vendor's booth. I understand the vendors and they should. They should sell it. They should buy them, sell them, flip them because it's legal and it's okay. But as a convention organizer, it's just a bad experience, especially for newbies that don't understand why is, you know, why is the C-3PO droids figure, you know, 80 bucks or whatever over here and it's 250 across the way and it's sold out here it's just it's it's a bad precedent and it hurts the experience the celebration store was a messy place to get into much like d23 we did pick up a few things there i got the shirt we got the program we got the uh, <laughs> admiral akbar sushi set which was kind of fun um like a lot of the stuff in the celebration store i don't know what we're gonna do with it and so that's why we didn't buy much whether it was the space slug jack in a box or the uh uh, the the flip flops or the Bosque sweatshirt or things like that. A lot of things are just kind of oddball items, but uh, you know you pick them up because they're fun and because you fought so hard to get into the celebration store. We didn't get into the store until Saturday, so a lot of stuff was sold out by that point. Actually, no, I take it back. Late Friday, a lot of stuff was sold out by that point. A few things came in and, and went away, um, but we weren't willing to put in the time to make it a three, four, five hour adventure like we know some people did. Uh, with the rest of the floor, there was some fun newer stuff at not bad prices. Uh, Carmel picked up a awesome uh, Boba Fett purse and so she has the R2 D2 one um, as well but just a, a fun purse and it was a decent price it was about what we find them for um, 
at Disneyland and, and Knott's where we get our discounts and things like that. Picked up a uh, from Comic Images. They're a famous San Diego Comic Con exhibitor as well that always has some great stuff there. Picked up the chopper bag was 55 I believe on opening on Thursday by the time we got to Saturday Sunday went down to 20 bucks and there was a lot of good deals we found just in general like that where big sales uh, happened as we got later into the weekend uh, picked up from Brian's Toys the Jocasta new not a tough to well it is tough to find just because Brian's Toys is the only one that was allowed to uh, make the figure they made it uh, in joint venture with Hasbro but started out the weekend at 40 we got it for 20 so a lot of patience paid off the advice going in was if you saw something you love buy it I definitely think that was good advice it was advice we were given it's advice we gave people but if you could wait waiting was good and paid off lots of kitschy stuff oddball ephemera and things like that we picked up the collector swap meet was a lot of fun um, just people regular vend I'm sorry regular um, attendees like us we set up a little spot on the floor at the collector swap meet ourselves and made a couple hundred bucks there just selling doubles and triples and random pins and vinyl nations and black series figures we had things like that but then you're able to find oddball stuff like this like who doesn't need a comb from return of the jedi or a glue uh, color glue or a guide to dental hygiene uh, via star wars so a lot of just fun odd odd um stuff weighted beginning of the show $30 these old paint figurines from empire strikes back picked it up for ten dollars on the last day there shampoo bottle we got this actually free as part of a throw-in um, on a deal on some of the stuff the dealers seemed very much up to deal although we got varying reports on that other friends of ours uh, throughout the show that we would run into and talk to and stuff uh, didn't have as good of a of a venture with some of the dealing and bargaining and things like that so I'm not sure if it was newer versus older stuff because obviously a lot of our focus was in the vintage realm usually vintage isn't the best place to make bargains because the prices are consistent in terms of them being able to sell them on eBay but a lot of dealers were willing to deal why wheel and deal with us uh, the cantina this was a highlight purchase for us something we wanted to get for a long time 60 bucks obviously a really dinged up box but uh, by eBay prices and stuff that was uh, something we were happy with given its shape picked up c3po for 40 bucks nice solid joint still good paint job not too chipped up or any of that and then picked up a bunch of pretty tattered but good enough for us vintage Kenner figures so let's see all in all this is was like 120 bucks for the four of them over the course of the couple of days um, and again they're you know yellowed uh, the not clear in the uh, bubble and things like that but still fun again our collection is much more about having the fun 70s and 80s toys um, obviously we'd love to have them all in immaculate shape and you know clear 95 grading and all that but uh, it's not it's not in our budget so we try and shoot for a lot of five ten twenty dollars I think the most expensive thing we bought oh yeah for sure the most expensive thing we bought is the sixty dollar cantina so that was kind of like our big splurge thing but a lot of ten twenty thirty dollars the Ugnaught was just twenty bucks you know so uh, the best Bengard, 25 bucks so we found some really good deals there by being patient no show that we've been to in the last couple years can even come close to the scene for toys at this con so that was a lot of fun um and that's something that's going to be hard to uh get over as we go to other cons in the near future here so uh have a lot of fun so in wrapping up the show had a ton of fun great great stuff um again there were some management issues in terms of just how lines worked exclusive scalping all of that some things that i think wouldn't be that hard to solve and hopefully they do get solved before celebration comes back out here to anaheim there's just some real simple structural things we talk about them a lot more in detail on our podcast so check it out if you're interested in that besides that though lots of fun 2016 they're going to be in London so I'm not sure that that will be the first uh, con that we cover by getting on a plane I mean we've not yet covered a convention uh, via airplane so all the cons we've covered have been kind of within a seven eight hour drive of Southern California and that's kind of our niche so we'll see if London changes that um, it's right up on top of San Diego Comic Con so it doesn't look like a really good time of year for us in 2016 but we'll see lots of fun hope you enjoy Star Wars Celebration Anaheim and if you weren't able to be there we hope you enjoyed our coverage of it we've got oh about a hundred videos up on YouTube a giant uh, photo gallery that's going to be making its way up a ton of full panel uh, videos as well as well as all the social media stuff if you want to scroll through our Instagram and things like that tons of fun stuff there so hope you enjoyed it all until next time we'll see you in line somewhere